In today's video, what is your ideal weight? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today we're going to break down the topic of what is a good weight for you, what is an ideal weight for you, what is healthy, what is unhealthy. And the question comes from my Instagram direct message. So if you guys would like to send me some questions, send them here. And the reason I'm doing this video topic today is I have been, I want to say overwhelmed with the amount of times people have asked me how much should they weigh. They say that they've lost a lot of weight. Is that too much? Are they too thin? They've gained weight, is it too much? And so instead of actually taking one question, because a few of the people that actually asked this question just asked that their identities not be put into the video, so I'm not even gonna post the question. But what I'd like to do is just propose the question to you guys. What is your ideal weight? And this comes from a very personal place. If you like this type of information where I, a coach, is gonna give you an evidence-based approach to reaching all your fitness goals, hit subscribe. That's what I love to do here. And we're gonna talk a little bit personally about my own thoughts on weight and how I associate it. And then we're gonna give you some specific things that you can do right now at home to determine if you're at a healthy place in your life. Now, we've all heard of body mass index or BMI. And this, I think probably decades and decades ago was a standard that we used to use, but I think it's highly outdated. In fact, when I was studying exercise science at the University of South Florida, when the BMI thing came up in the textbook, the teacher even said that it was outdated. It's still kind of used, but just to give you an idea of what body mass index is, they created a scale based on height of where your weight should be. Now, for me, I am six foot three or 75 inches tall, it says my weight should be between 155 and 199 pounds. Now, just to give you some context, when I graduated high school, I was about 155 pounds, skinny as a rail, and I walk around now between 225 and 230 pounds, feel pretty damn healthy at that weight. And when I compete in a bodybuilding show, which I'll put some clips on the screen here for you, and I get down to, I don't know, five, 6% body fat, completely shredded, yeah, I'm right around that 200 pound mark. So as you can see, the, BMS, the BMI index for me and probably for you is going to be a little bit inaccurate. You know, it may be something you can use as a guideline, but I think if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in some form of resistance training or fitness. And I think if you're an athlete and you have lean body mass, the, the BMI index is probably going to be wildly inaccurate. So where do we go from there? Well, the next closest thing that I found that I thought was kind of a good indicator of our health was our waist to hip ratio. Now this is something where you can use a device. I got it off Amazon, I think it was three bucks. You simply put this around your waist, press this button, and it closes and it gives you a waist measurement. Then you put this around your waist. I'm sorry, your hips. So you do one around your waist, one around your hips. Uh, and just to give you an idea where my numbers came in, so my ratio came back at about 0.77. And for men, if you're 0.095 or lower, you're in the healthy range. And if you're 1.0 or higher, you're starting to get in that unhealthy range. And for women, it's about 0.8 or lower is in the healthy range. And 0.86 or higher is starting to get unhealthy. And what you'll see here, a common theme, is this waist measurement. And why is that? Well because the measurement around our waist, it's body fat, right? There's not a lot of hypertrophy or increase in muscle size that's gonna impact our waist measurement. So a lot of the measurements that I like to look at that I found were related to the waist measurement. So the one other one that I found, which I thought was really easy to correlate, was simply your height in inches to your waist in inches. And all you need to do there is make sure that your height is at least two times or greater your waist. So for myself, at 34 to 35 inches on my waist, that means I'm at 68 to 70 inches. Well, I'm 75 inches tall, right? So as you can see there, you're just looking for basically a two to one ratio there. And if you start to get where your waist is not half of your height in inches, well then maybe it's time to start looking at changing something. But those numbers are all about being healthy. Those numbers are all about probably general population people that are looking to kind of determine if they're at a healthy place. Probably if you go to your doctor, they're gonna ask you things like this. 
But I think what you're asking here, most of the people that were asking were asking if they were too light, if they were too lean, if they were too skinny. And so I want to give you guys some, some insight on this. And I'm just going to say this kind of bluntly. There is no perfect weight, okay? I think a lot of us kind of get caught up looking at other people's heights and weights and think, man, that guy is six foot three, and I'll give you an example of somebody that I'll look at, somebody like a Mike O'Hearn or somebody like The Rock. These guys are around my height, six three, six four. The Rock's obviously walking around at 260 pounds and shredded and jacked, and Mike O'Hearn's probably something similar. And so I used to get caught up in those heights and weights. And all it led me to do was, yes, I got up to 250 pounds, but I was miserable because I was 250 pounds carrying a lot of body fat. Now, before you guys jump and say, well, but those guys might be on steroids or they might be doing this and that, let me just stop you. I don't care. If, if I wanted to look like them and I felt like just jumping on some steroids was going to make that happen and it was valuable to me, I'd probably do it. But ultimately, what I have found has been kind of an internal excitement about being the best version of me that I can be. And I know that probably sounds cheesy to you guys because, you know, uh, when I was younger, it would have sounded cheesy to me. It would have sounded like, well, that's ridiculous. But it's very true. I've gone through many cycles of bodybuilding and powerlifting, focusing on putting, putting on muscle, losing body fat. And what I've found is that through this journey, I've really just started to appreciate my body for what it is and for all the things that it can do, you know. I've, I've been able to dunk a basketball. Uh, I've been able to throw a baseball 90 miles an hour. I've benched 400 pounds, you know, like there's been some great things that, that this body has been able to do for me. And I now appreciate that much more than ever. And I think when we're young, we tend to only focus on the things we can't do. And we start to say, well, man, I only weigh 130 or 140 pounds, but I, but I don't look the way I want to look. The thing that you have to understand is that you don't get to change your genetics. You do not get to adjust your height, your hip to waist ratio, your the things that are kind of predetermined based on your genetics. But what you do get to determine is how hard you work and how hard you train, right? If you feel like your clothes are too loose, get some tighter clothes. The first thing I did when I did my first bodybuilding show and I got down to stage weight, my clothes were hanging off me and I hated them. Well, guess what I did? I went, instead of buying two XLs, I bought some extra larges and I probably got even down to some just regular large clothes, right? When the clothes are a little bit more form fitting, you feel a little bit better about yourself. So understanding that as you go through these weight loss cycles, if you're losing a lot of body fat, finding some clothes that make you feel good and confident can be important. Don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about other people's opinions. Find what makes you happy. And if it makes you happy and you're confident, other people are gonna recognize that and they're gonna be happy for you. I know people that have been in incredible shape and still thought they looked terrible. As someone who coaches athletes who compete on a bodybuilding stage at the highest level of the sport, I promise you, they often have just as much, if not more, kind of self-doubt about their physiques. So as many times as you might look at somebody on Instagram or in a magazine or on a TV show or in a movie and think, wow, that physique is something I admire. They must be so happy to have that physique. I promise you they don't. There's been times in my life, I'll even look back at videos of myself. I've been doing YouTube for over 10 years now. If you look back at my early videos from like 2008, 2009, 2010 when I was competing, you'd probably look at those and be like, wow, look at him, he looks amazing. And I look at those videos and think I look amazing now, but in the moment when I was posing in the mirror, all I saw was my flaws. All I saw was that I still had a little bit of body fat to lose, that my muscles weren't big enough. And so what we really should do is just focus on a body weight that you feel confident at. If you're lighter than you think you should be because of what other people think, but you're happy with how you look, screw those other people. If you're heavier than you think other people think you should be, but you feel strong and confident and you're healthy, screw what other people are thinking. This is a journey about you. The journey is between your ears. What you should weigh is something that you've got to figure out for yourself and gain confidence. And yes, now that I'm 44 years old and I've gone through these phases, listen, I don't know that if I would have told myself this at 18, 19 years old, it would have gotten through. But it's taken me a few years to figure this out because now I just appreciate this body for what it is. The scale, it's just a tool. It just gives me a number. What should I weigh? I don't care what I weigh. I care how happy I am with how I look and how I feel. 
and that is much more important. Yes, putting on muscle, losing body fat, these are all great endeavors, but don't get too hung up on the scale. Most of that is gonna be predetermined by your genetic makeup, but what's not predetermined by your genetic makeup is how much effort you put in day in and day out to reach your physique goals. That's the lesson for the day, guys. All right, enough ranting. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Comment below if you understand what I'm saying and if you've gone through this thing where you kind of beat yourself up and you, you tell yourself you don't look great only to look back and think, man, I didn't realize how good I looked back then. I think we've all done that. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.